the greatest British wrestler of the 20th century, died this March. Billy Robinson was born on the 18th of September 1938 to a family with a long history of fighting prowess. His great-great-grandfather was Harry Robinson, a bare-knuckle boxing champion of England, and his father Alf was a successful boxer and wrestler at a national level, and so it's no surprise that as a child Billy desperately wanted to be a boxer. But a serious childhood accident significantly damaged his eye and ruined his chances of ever getting licensed as a boxer, so instead he turned to traditional catch-as-catch-can wrestling. And the rest is history. Training under the great Billy Riley in Wigan, Robinson won the British Amateur title, the European Amateur title, the British Empire Amateur title, and with nothing else left to challenge him, he turned professional. He travelled the world seeking out the best wrestlers to fight, and along the way, he won every professional title worth winning. He starred in a Hollywood movie and hung out with royalty. He had a film based on his life, as well as a series of graphic novels and comics. But despite his unprecedented success in the ring, where Billy excelled the most was as a coach. He opened his own gym in Manchester, and in one memorable year, his students won seven out of a possible 11 British titles. One of those champions was Marty Jones, the last of the truly technical wrestlers, who went on to win seven world titles and coached none other than William Regal. Proper catch wrestling is notoriously hard, and Billy made it even harder, but his insistence on perfection paid huge dividends for those who could cope with his demanding approach to training. He brought us some of the best fighters and biggest names in martial arts, after giving up on professional wrestling during the WWF era because it wasn't wrestling, he found himself teaching mixed martial arts in Japan alongside another great from the same gym in Wigan, Carl Gotch. When the Gracie family were dominating the Western world, Billy was coaching a young Japanese man by the name of Kazushi Sakuraba, a young man who would defeat Hoyler Gracie, Henzo Gracie, Hyan Gracie and Hoist Gracie and earn himself the nickname the Gracie Hunter. Billy also coached Josh Barnett, the youngest man to ever win the UFC Heavyweight Championship. Eric Paulson called him a great icon, a superstar, and the world's greatest authority on catch wrestling. When Billy came back to the UK to teach for the first time in decades, he kick-started a resurgence of genuine catch wrestling. His passion was always for proper, authentic catch wrestling the way it was taught to him as a child in Riley's gym in Wigan. The way Riley taught it. The way Pop Charnock had taught it to Riley. The way it had been done for hundreds of years. I've spent the last 20 years studying the historical martial arts of England and that's why, on a late summer's day a few years ago, I jumped into the car to drive the 200 miles to Andy Crittenden's Martial Arts Centre in Doncaster for the opportunity to train with Billy himself. I had no idea what I was letting myself in for. I've trained with a number of big name instructors over the years, but no one like Billy. He had an incredible attention to detail. If something wasn't perfect, then it was wrong and needed correcting. He'd stop you, make you move by a fraction of an inch and make you do it again. And he was always right. That fraction of an inch was the difference between doing it with ease and struggling with the technique every step of the way. Once you got it, he'd make you do it again, and again, and again. Because of Billy, there are numerous clubs in the UK teaching authentic catch wrestling again. There are 17 wrestlers in the UK certified by him, and more through other gyms. Catch has never looked stronger. Billy was old when I met him already in his 70s and spoke in a quiet, hoarse voice, a result of repeated surgery on his neck and throat. He was an old man, old before his time. He walked slowly with a stick and relied heavily on his assistants, Jake Shannon and Sam Crescent, to get on the mats. But even six months before his death, he still had a grip of steel. He put me in a standing armbar for a photo opportunity and I swear I can still feel it. He was frail, but he had an aura of strength, a real feel of immortality. So when he died, peacefully in his sleep, everyone was shocked. He inspired passion in his students. He created a love of catch wrestling and a genuine warmth for him as a man. 
His passion for detail on the mats and his reputation for getting angry and swearing at students didn't change the fact that he was a true gentleman off the mats. I was lucky enough to spend time socially with him, and the worst thing I ever heard him say about someone was that they were no wrestler. Billy Robinson was a one-off, the kind of man who only comes along once in a generation. And I'm more proud than I know how to say that I could call him my coach.